How about Rockies Mets here? The Mets play the Yanks twice in the Bronx. They lose both. They're looking to get right. Well, they're looking like, I believe, the single biggest favorites we have seen all Major League Baseball season. Jacob deGrom against the Colorado Rockies, minus 450 at home. Minus 450, Donnie. What are we doing with this baseball game here? It should be an easy win, but the more important question is here is why was the ground pushed back in that last start against the New York Yankees? Why did they feel the need to give him an extra two days when we thought he was completely healthy and dealing in Major League Baseball? We're saying that he couldn't stand up to that Yankee Bronx cheer crowd where he might get lit up and that's going to ruin his confidence the rest of the way and there's no way he can win a World Series if he loses to the Yankees. Well, he sort of gets a really bad baseball team in the Rockies, so what do we anticipate today? Kevin, seven innings pitched. 99 total pitches or less, 12 strikeouts, and an easy Mets victory because, quite frankly, even if he doesn't pitch well, I don't think that's all that matters today because that lineup for the New York Mets should, and I say should, be able to hit against the Rockies because in those two games against the Yankees, I actually took back-to-back Mets team totals to the over. They didn't even show up to the plate at all. But if we're just looking at past 30-day statistics here, going up against right-handed pitching, and Feltner is a bad right-handed pitcher with an exit of close to six, right-handed batters at a 421 weighted on base percentage. We'll get a pretty good look today because if we're looking at the first seven batters in the lineup here for the New York Mets, take a look at these weighted on base percentages, 347, 368, 448, 411, 428, 470. Then you throw in a 298 in there for Pete Alonzo. Come on, Pete, 298. What are you doing over here? Mets should win easy yeah. today, but four minutes, 450. They're not even like a parlay piece at that point with that price. Certainly not. Certainly not. Now, and here's the thing quickly with DeGrom, because I think you're messing around, though. I think some people were like, oh, DeGrom ducking the Yankees. I mean, did we see what the Yanks were doing? Up, I mean, yeah. I don't think he was ducking a, a team that was providing absolutely zero offensive juice. I think of that as last outing against Atlanta, he went to 95 pitches, which was almost 20 more than he had thrown on the season. And it's one of those things where I'm very interested to see how long DeGrom goes tonight. Because, look, it's not sa- you never know. But, Donnie, it's safe to assume that after six innings, Jacob DeGrom will probably have allowed at most one run, where usually mm-hmm. you'd say, okay, he's coming back out for the seventh. What's the pitch count? And what's the actual length that they're willing to let DeGrom go? Because we talk about wanting to see DeGrom healthy. That's not just available, right? But it's, I don't want DeGrom's cap to be 80 pitches when you are out there in the postseason, right, Tierra? So tonight, that, look, again, like you said, they're not a parlay piece, but this is an interesting game to see how long DeGrom is allowed to go.